Did you know that you can now use ChatGPT to help you generate textures? So check this out. I found an image of a walnut plank, right? And I just asked it to make a seamless texture of this. And by the looks of it, it did a pretty phenomenal job. Again, look at the angle I gave it, right? This is pretty crazy that I was able to translate that. To do this manually would be a pain in the butt. I probably wouldn't even attempt it. So what happens when I plug this into D5? Is ChatGPT lying to me? So I'm gonna hit I on my material. I'll go over here and let's load up that walnut texture. So here we go. Up close, you know, looks, looks fine. Let me play with the, uh, the stretch. And you know, we do see a little bit of tiling, right? We see this band, that band, you know, so it did lie a little bit, but it looks pretty good. Um, especially thinking of like how architects work, it's really difficult to get head on shots of like things you want. So let's see if D5 can help me out. So I'm gonna use the make seamless function right under here. Let's hit make seamless. And now it's going to try and fix this. Again, this does like a pretty good job. It's not gonna be 100%, but it's like, it's like good enough. I, I think for like a typical designer's work, that's totally fine. Like it did a great job. Sure, this splotch is like a little repeating, um, but this is kind of like a fine wood. You probably wouldn't have this much like visible on any surface. So let me just like lower it. You'd probably have something like this. And that looks pretty good. So here's where it gets crazy. So let me go back to ChatGPT. I asked it to generate a roughness map and a normal map of this. So now let me plug those in. And what's interesting about this is like, it looks pretty good, just like the map at first glance, but it did take a while. And what I'm kind of debating here is like, would I actually use this or would I use the AI tool built right in here? So let's boost our normal. I mean, that looks like it's working properly. Same thing with our roughness. Like it's working. I mean, these are, these are good maps. Like it saves you a step of going into Photoshop, you know, converting it into a normal map and making it black and white and playing with the levels of roughness. But at the same time, I could just use the AI tool. So let me delete this. Actually, let me do one better. I'm going to grab this material and I'm going to duplicate it here. And let's see if I were to use the D5 tool, if it'd be any better. So I'm going to AIify this. And again, this is looking at the ChatGPT base map and it's gonna generate our own maps. And I find this to be so much faster than ChatGPT. Like this takes a fraction, like look at that. This, I'm not even kidding you, each map took me over 30 seconds. You know, not the end of the world, but it did, you know, did take some time. So now to make this fair, let me just grab another plane holding down shift, if you don't know that trick, and I'm gonna duplicate this guy over. And before I duplicate it over, I need to make it unique. Otherwise it's gonna change and that's not great. So I'm gonna make unique. I drop this and then I'll paste it here. Okay, so as you can see by default, you know, some of our roughness is different. Let me just make sure it's apples to apples. That's roughness one, normal one, yep. So they look pretty, pretty similar. So now let me start playing with some values. That's our normal. Let's lower our roughness. So the default roughness map is definitely a lot less intense than the ChatGPT one. So that's an interesting comparison. Let's make it nice and clean. So we've got 1.3 and 0.5. So we've got this. Let's hop over here. Let's go 1, 0.3, and then 0.5. So this is definitely like say like more accurate but you see what I mean like look at this versus that you see how it's kind of like a sheen so pretty interesting um, you can see even just like by, by the base values this is much grayer than this so this is actually a pretty good way to generate roughness maps I don't hate this let's see what else I could do so you know, one of our students from the ArcVis Academy uh, Philip had this uh, this rendering and he's like what happens if you say make it a photo so this is the output. So this was his base render, okay? And this was the ChatGPT version of it. Looks pretty good. I mean, like, look at the asphalt here and like the grass and like the people look pretty good. The materials and the lighting also look really good, especially with the parallax. I feel like it fixed some of the distortion there. This looks really good. So let's do some other tests. Here, I grabbed another sample image and I plugged it in. And this is the output. So look at that. 
that's the that vein right there and that and then it was able to expand this and make it into a texture and all i did was this i just grabbed this so this is how the workflow works. So say whatever material you want. Let's say, I don't know, marble white. You know, I want a typical white marble. This is how, you know, architects work, right? We, we search the web for a sample that looks about right. And then we have to do a bunch of Photoshopping, right? So like that could potentially work, but these guys, these guys are a pain to work with when it comes to texturing. So let's, let's throw something difficult at it. I mean, this is, this is gonna be very difficult. All right, so let's see what it could do here. So make a texture. Uh, anyone who like works with bathrooms knows how annoying it is to do these types of textures. So let's see if, um, if ChatGPT can do this correctly. And here, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, fast forward or anything, but I get this error a lot. And you saw that, um, you'll, you'll see that a lot when you try doing this. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like a new thing, but I run into this error a lot. You know, you can keep track of how long it's taking. I do notice it is a little, a little slow, which isn't, you know, that great, but it just, it takes its time. So while this is loading, I think it's like important to note like what this actually means for ArcViz artists. I think it makes, you know, the, uh, the floor for creating custom materials so much easier than having to learn something like substance and you know bitmap to material and like all those tools here we're literally just talking to chat and asking it to do things for us i think this is pretty big deal um especially since it was also acting as like an ai enhancer so this is just the early stage of it and it's just going to get better and better and for those who have been like using chat for a while you know that like dolly hasn't been that great as an image maker so this is like a huge, huge step forward. And the other interesting thing is you can also do style transfers. So if I were to just grab this image again, right? Put it in here and say, say, make this a pencil drawing. This is another thing that it can do, right? Um, and that makes it even crazier, right? And you can see, this is what I was talking about, like the time here. You know, sure, manually it would take me longer, but this is it's a little, little painful. And because I have this here, I can't cue this up. So that's kind of a bummer. So I hope this gets better, but it just feels a little, a little buggy. So I'm gonna send this over and it's like, it's finished, but it's not really like visible, right? So weird little, uh, little glitch I have here, but I bet if I hit copy and then paste, yeah, nothing. So. Again, early stages, it'll get better. Um, but it does seem pretty, pretty promising. I've noticed sometimes if I, you know, refresh, it'll appear or reappear and there we go. So that's kind of what I'm talking about, but give them credit. This does look pretty good. Um, and it does look like it could be seamless. So let's do our test again. I'm gonna save that and let me reset this material from scratch, base color map, and let's load this in and see what we get. Okay, let's play with the scale. Okay, not perfect, but with a little bit of Photoshopping, you fix that seam there, and this is now usable. And then pair it with this, and you're golden. So in my opinion, generate the base color map in, in, um, in ChatGPT. You know, you could still use your traditional methods, but I would do it there. And then I would use D5 to generate the texture maps. If you're really, really particular about how the map should be, you know, obviously do it yourself. But I think it's also worth testing ChatGPT's own custom, you know, ability to generate maps. Like I thought the roughness map from ChatGPT was slightly better than D5. You know, it could be an isolated event, but still very, very interesting. Um, and it's kind of crazy seeing the overlap of D5 and ChatGPT. Like this functionality is kind of built into the post AI function. That's this guy right here. So it's kind of interesting, like where are people going to be, you know, spending their, their AI time? Will it be in D5 or will it be in ChatGPT? I mean, just for like the sake of simplicity, I'd probably just keep everything in D5 um, just because it's like there, it's easier to tweak. I think it's faster too. Again, this is all live, so you can see like how kind of slow it is. Um, but off the bat, 
it's really good at preserving structure, which we love. Um, the quality looks pretty good. I mean, even the clouds, like pay attention to that. I know it's like very, very slow and we can't see much of it, but that's kind of part of this video, right? So you understand like it's really, really cool and interesting, but kind of slow. And then there we go. So that is the completed drawing. I mean, that looks pretty good. I mean, like we, we can't, we can't really criticize that, right? Like that's, that's pretty nuts. Um, yeah, weird that I got another network error, but like, I wish I could draw like this. So anyways, I wanted to point out that ChatGPT now has this ability. You should use it. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. And as always, if you like the video, hit like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.